When you insert nodes into a tree, the depth may become very large. For example, the tree may end up like a line, very unbalanced. So the depth is basically the number of elements in the tree. In this lecture, we begin to see how we can rebalance the tree so the depth stays small. Our goal is to maintain uh, trees so that we can perform a search, insert and delete in time uh, logarithmic. To accomplish that, we have to keep the depth of the tree to logarithmic because the time to search is proportional to the depth. So the depth has to be logarithmic. As we just remarked, when you insert uh, and also when you delete, the depth may change. So uh, to avoid the uh, depth blow up, we have to restructure the tree to keep the depth to uh, log n. The most basic uh, restructuring operation is a rotation. Rotation uh, is a basic building block, uh, which is then used by more complicated operations, which we're going to see later. This is how uh, a tree rotation uh, works. Um, so here is a, a tree. The way it's written here is that uh, um, we have uh, a node with key A, okay, which is a child of some other uh, uh, node. A has a left node left child B, uh, which is just a, a node, uh, a left, uh, a right child, which is a, a whole subtree, T3. And then B has a left child, which is a subtree T1, and a right child, which is a subtree um, T2, okay? And uh, in this tree, you can perform uh, uh, rotations, and we're going to look at uh, what happens if you perform a right rotation at A. Okay, so uh, right really means uh, clockwise and the way in which you uh, should picture this is as follows, that uh, A goes uh, to the right in a clockwise fashion. Okay. The tree um, gets tilted like this. You continue and what happens is that uh, um, B becomes uh, um, the node which um, used to be A, okay? And uh, the right child of B becomes A, okay? B maintains its left child, and the right child of B becomes the left child of A, okay? So as you can see here, after right rotation at A, B, becomes, B became the top node, the right child is A, so went like this. The left child of B stayed the same, and B gave its right child to A, uh, which takes it as left child. Okay, and a left rotation at node B is just a symmetric operation. Okay, so um, you have to visualize now that uh, B goes uh, counterclockwise to the left, okay? A goes above, and A is going to give uh, uh, its uh, left child to B, which will take it as right child, this fashion, okay? And you go back to this tree here. So rotations uh, um, can be just implemented uh, moving pointers around in our representation of trees using uh, arrays. Um, I have here some uh, pseudocode, okay? And um, I don't want to go through it. Uh, I just want to uh, show it to you to show that uh, really um, it's a constant time operation. Uh, there is no recursion, there is no for loop. Uh, uh, you just do a bunch of cases and you update uh, various pointers, okay? You have to take care of some cases in which like, you know, if a child doesn't, a node does not have a child and uh, so on, okay? But it's a, it's a constant time operation. And just to show you in action what, what happens, uh, uh, again, in, in the array notation, uh, if this is our tree, has this representation here as an array. And if you do a right rotation at two, then what happens? Remember, 
uh, two goes uh, clockwise down okay this the node one will, will uh, go up and so you will get a picture like this okay this part here becomes uh, a line and uh, the pointers you can see in these arrays have the how they've been uh, updated for example uh, in in the left uh, tree the right child of node one was null because one does not have a right child after you do the rotation the right child of node one will be two one will point to two and so on okay as we mentioned earlier uh, rotations are used by more complicated operations uh, to keep the depth of the tree small and there is really uh, an whole uh, uh, industry of uh, um, data structures which use rotations uh, uh, to maintain depth uh, small. Uh, there is AVL trees. Uh, these are binary trees uh, in which the heights of uh, each... Uh, uh, so in a node, the heights of the children differ by at most one. So it's a very strictly balanced and the strictness uh, um, makes the balance a little, little uh, um, tedious. Um, then there is some, um, some other trees which are arguably more intuitive, like uh, two, three, four trees, which basically you allow uh, for trees to have multiple, uh, um, multiple uh, children, um, and, and so on. Uh, red and black trees uh, can be thought of as, as a way to simulate two, three, four trees by just using a binary tree um, and you put some colors on uh, the edges. Um, so uh, arguably, um, all these things uh, are uh, somewhat complicated uh, to understand and to program. Okay, So there is many cases in all of them. Um, arguably, the simplest variant of all these things uh, is uh, um, something which is uh, known as, uh, uh, or we can call AA trees, okay? And this is what uh, we're going to see in uh, detail, okay? Uh, we're going to give the details of the rebalancing operations uh, in uh, AA trees. So let's start by uh, seeing some pictures of what AA trees are, uh, then we can formalize what the trees are, and then we can go back to the pictures. So here is how uh, an AA tree is going to look like. Uh, so as you can see, it's a binary tree. It's a binary tree. Um, and there's going to be different uh, levels in which you group the nodes. Okay, this, this, is, this is level one, this is level two, and this is level three. Okay, and there's going to be some operations like skew and split, which uh, are important to uh, rebalance the tree and that will move nodes and change the pointers. The, the definition of a tree is written here. Um, there is a bunch of conditions. Uh, um, the intuition, however, is uh, fairly straightforward. The intuition is that the, the only path with nodes of the same level is a single left-right edge. Okay? So in other words, you always have to change level when you go from a parent to a child with the only possible exception of a single left-right edge. Let me go back to the pictures, okay? So here, uh, this node here has children uh, 8 and 12, they change level. You go from level 3 to level 2, this is good. Also 4 to 2, you change uh, uh, level. Um, in this case, uh, you don't change level. 4 has the right child 10, which is in the same level. And this is the only thing that, that you're going to allow. Okay? And the same thing happens here in five and seven. This is uh, this little amount of flexibility which uh, allows uh, um, to have uh, um, simpler rebalancing oper operations. Okay, it's like the flexibility that you have in two, three, four trees when you allow for multiple trees and no, not just the binary. It's the same flexibility that, that you have with red and black trees uh, and uh, so on. Um, here is the single left-right edge among uh, nodes with the same level. Uh, to be more precise, uh, um, an AA tree is going to be a binary search tree, because okay, so it's a binary search tree, and each node, uh, moreover, has a level. Okay, and we're going to require that the level of every leaf is one, 
okay? The lifts are level one by convention. Um, the level of every left child is exactly one less than that of its parent, okay? So if you go from parent to left child, you always decrease the level. And the level of every right child can be either equal to that of the parent or one less than that of the parent, okay? So we're going to allow the level of the right child to be equal to that of the parent. However, um, if you go to a, a right grandchild, then it has to be strictly less than that of its grandparent. Okay, so if you, if you put these conditions um, together, you get this intuition uh, that uh, the only path with not the same uh, level is a single left, left uh, red edge. And we also require that the, the, the tree is essentially complete. So every node except those at level one must have two children. Okay, so, uh, you know, this is what an AH uh, tree is. And, um, you know, here is how it looks into pictures. Okay, so these nodes may not have children or may only have one child. Every other node at every level has to have two, two children. Um, the edges uh, in the same uh, level uh, are at most a single left right edge, okay? Nothing else, everything else has to cross levels. Okay, an important property is that uh, an A8 tree with N nodes has depth order of uh, log N, okay? This is what we want. We want to keep uh, the depth to order of uh, log N so that the search is fast. Okay, and these conditions that, that we just required in the definition uh, guarantee that. And he, here is just the proof, and just to do this to show you how the conditions um, um, are used. So uh, if the D is the, the depth of the tree, okay, then uh, um, we see that the level of the root has to be at least d over two, okay? And th that follows because it, you can avoid uh, changing level uh, just uh, um, uh, just uh, um, with a single left right edge, okay? But if you have uh, the edges as in a depth, then you must change level at least d over two times. And then, uh, because we also require that uh, every node of level uh, bigger than one has two children, okay, then uh, from the root, uh, at least for depth d over two minus one, you must have a full binary tree. Okay, a tree in which each uh, node has two children, and uh, such a tree has a number of nodes which is exponential in the depth, two raised to d over two minus one, okay? A, a, a tree, a full binary tree of depth d over two minus one has, has at least an exponential number of nodes, so two to the d over two minus one. So um, this proof is not uh, um, absolutely critical, but I wanted to show you uh, how the uh, definition um, um, is useful in improving this uh, very important property.